Hi guys, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now on the channel, I've talked about a ham radio community developed digital protocol called M17 in the past. And I've created a few videos on this using a software application called DoodStar or some special hardware called the Module 17. I even covered how to modify a Retivis RT3S DMR radio so that it could run open RTX to support the M17 protocol. Well, fast forward to now, and Connect Systems have produced the handheld radio which will support M17 without any hardware modifications. In fact, it can support DMR and analog together, or it can support M17 and analog FM together, but more about that later in the video. Now, we'll speed through what comes in the box as it's pretty standard accessories like a desktop charger, antenna, belt clip, and wrist strap. But what is nice is that a programming cable is actually supplied. Now you will need this USB programming cable to enable the M17 protocol. So keep it to hand when you're ready to set up the CS7000 to be used with M17. The included antenna is designed to be used with the frequency range that this radio supports. And if you have the GPS module installed, this antenna is also used for that, as suggested by that little print on the bottom of the antenna. Now the included battery has a capacity of 2400 milliamp hour and to charge the battery you will need to use the supplied desktop charger and there's no USB-C charging with this particular battery. Specifications of the CS7000 show that this radio supports a frequency range of between 400 and 512 megahertz. So that's essentially the 70 centimeter band for ham radio users. It also has an IP67 waterproof rating and it hosts 128 megabytes flash memory for storing settings and parameters. Now, if you wanted more memory and a faster processor, then the CS7000 M17 Plus, which is another radio, would be the radio to go for. Otherwise, this radio will be just fine. The screen, it's 1.8 inches with 160 by 128 resolution, and it's full color. The connector on the right side of the radio is Motorola compatible, and I think this means that you could potentially use Motorola accessories like a speaker mic, for example. Down the left side of the radio, there's a top function button, then there's a larger PTT button, and then below this, there's a further two function buttons. Now on the top of the radio, there's two rotary controls. One is for on and off and also controls volume, and the other is a channel change control, which kind of clicks as you turn it. So if I now attach the supplied antenna and then attach the battery to the rear of the radio, we can now power on the CS7000. Now by default, as shipped, the CS7000 will arrive with a DMR firmware installed. Now this is the native firmware for this radio. So you can use DMR and Analog FM with this firmware after programming it. But if you want to use M17, you will need to load the M17 supported firmware. To begin the update process, we need to first attach that included programming cable to the side of the radio, just like this. It kind of hooks in at the top and then just use the thumb screw to keep it in place. And then the other end you just plug into your computer. Now I will be using Windows and I'm not 100% sure that you can do this via Linux, but I would imagine you can if you can find the software for it. The Connect Systems website actually has a download page where we will need to download two particular files. The first will be the firmware file located here, and then the second will be the software that we will use to write the firmware file to the CS7000 radio. Just make sure to install the DFU application once it's downloaded before continuing. Now there is also a guide that you can follow for converting the radio from DMR to M17 firmware, available on the Connect Systems website. So I would definitely recommend to have a good read through that and go through the steps as they are written. But let's just go through that now. So make sure that the radio is turned off and then run the DFU application that we downloaded and installed a moment ago. Hold down the top function button, which is the one just above the PTT button, and then just power on the radio. Now the screen, well, it will stay blank. There'll be no indication into what mode it's actually in but don't worry, it will be in DFU mode. Now, if you turn your attention to the DFU software on your computer, then you should see in the available DFU devices box at the top, STM device in DFU mode. 
Now, if you don't see this, just wait a moment and let the drivers install if it's a first time install. The documentation actually gives you some other information about when you're installing drivers that would be worth reading. Now, once the radio is detected, double click on Option Bytes. You will then be asked if you'd like to remove the read protection. So just simply press yes for this. Now it'll appear that it's not doing anything, but wait for a few seconds or up to a minute, and then another dialog will pop up and show you this. Now at this point, you can turn the radio off again, and then hold in the same button as we did before, SK1 as per the documentation, and then power on the radio. This time, click the Choose button on the DFU software, and then select the firmware file that we previously downloaded. Now, just press the Upgrade button. Now, if you get this pop-up, just select Yes, and then the firmware will be uploaded to the radio. Now, once finished, the DFU software will have a green banner at the bottom stating that the upgrade was successful. You can now turn off the radio and then turn it back on again. Now, assuming everything went well, you'll now be presented with the Open RTX logo and the radio boots up like this. Now, one of the first things we need to do is program my call sign into the radio and this can be performed through the menu system. And pressing the OK button enters you into the menu system. And one of the great things about M17 is that there is no central database of call signs needed. The program call sign in the radio is sent as part of the M17 transmission, a bit like how Fusion, D-Star, and DMR Talker alias works. The CAN setting, which is just a number between 0 and 15, is the channel access number. Now think of this like CTCSS or DCS that we find on analog transmissions. Now I've just only set mine to zero. I've never needed to change mine to anything else. In the settings menu, you'll find banks, channels, and contacts. Now at the moment, at the time of making this video, these features are not yet supported. In the display settings, you can adjust the screen brightness and a timer setting for how long the bat light stays on. In radio settings, you can adjust a transmit offset and change the step size when tuning. The accessibility screen allows you to enable or disable voice prompts, which when enabled will speak the currently tuned frequency or selected menu setting. The info page shows some specifics about your radio, such as battery voltage, charged capacity, received signal level in DBM, and some other useful information. Now, if you tap the top function button that's just above the PTT, the same button that we used to enter DFU mode earlier, you'll be presented with another menu selection. Now, from here, you can change the radio's modulation type from M17 to FM and back again if you want to. You can also change power level between 1 and 5 watts and change other settings like transmit offset, CTCSS tones, like for when you're in FM. Now, as previously shown in another video, I modified a Retivis RT3S so that it can support M17 with the open RTX firmware. So I scooted off to another room in the house with the RT3S and transmitted on the same frequency as the CS7000 was set to. And well, this is what the audio sounds like. This is uh, M0 DQW testing M17. This is uh, M0 DQW testing M17. Transmitting from a Retivis RT3S, which has been modified for M17, and then being received on the Connect Systems CS7000. This is Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey, over. Now, I also set up my MMDVM hotspot and had a quick chat with a couple of hams, one in Australia, Cole, VK1KCM, and then Andre in the United States, K8TUN. Now, little did I realize at the time, but K8TUN seems to be some kind of firmware wizard. So it was definitely nice to have a chat with him about M17 and to find out that he's working on some current M17 projects. Uh, thank you very much for that. Um, so w which application are you using to get into the M17 reflector? Is it DroidStar that you're using? Yep, it's DroidStar on my Android phone. I didn't know it was also on on Windows and Mac and Linux. I thought it was just an Android application, hence the name DroidStar, but I might even put it on my computer just so I have it. So uh, The radio I'm on at the moment is the first commercial radio, which... Uh, which was released to, uh, which supports M17. Uh, I'm using a Connect Systems CS7000 M17, obviously with the M17 firmware from 
Open RTX. Oh yeah, yeah. I saw it. Um, I sent an email to Jerry at Connect Systems. And- What's interesting about M17, if you've not heard about it before, is that it's community developed, so there's no licensing to worry about. Also, the protocol does have support for data and voice at the same time, meaning we can send text messages, share GPS data, and potentially send files once the firmware and supported software has been developed. Now, while the cost of the CS7000 is not cheap, it does provide access to the M17 digital mode without having to use your computer or perform any tricky modifications to existing radios. Now, I'll leave a link below where you can go and check out more information on the Connect Systems website. I'll also leave a link to the M17 wiki page, which contains lots of useful information. Especially if you want to start developing, you can look at the protocol data. Anyway, guys, that's the end of the video. And I just want to say a massive thank you to everybody that watches my videos. It's always appreciated. Feel free to leave comments down below whether you like this or not. I think it's great innovation. Until the next video, take care. See you in the next one.